But that's not all, folks. Here's the real blockbuster. Brace yourselves, you might want to sit down. Spider-Man's real. Spider-Man's real name is... Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movie character cameos you didn't see coming. Chubbs used to be a golf pro, but up here he's just the dopest dance instructor. Ah, oh, that's nice. For this list, we're looking at the most exciting and surprising appearances by fictional characters. Consider this your spoiler warning, movie fans. Did we forget your favorite cameo? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Black Bolt – Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness Black Bolt is a lesser-known part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but hardcore fans know that he is one of the most powerful. He first starred in the show Inhumans before transitioning to film with a cameo in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Black Agar Baltagun, Keeper of the Terrigen Mists, the Inhuman King. Black Agar Baltagard? Huh. Hit a guy, hit a there. This sequel movie sees an alternate version of the hero appearing alongside the rest of the MCU's Illuminati to execute Doctor Strange. The twisty narrative allows for all kinds of surprises, this star lineup among them, even though he eventually loses to Scarlet Witch's tricks and succumbs to his own sound. For a moment there, we got to see the underrated character use his deadly vocal abilities in an impressive display. Wanda, Black Bolt could destroy you with one whisper from his mouth. What mouth? Number 19. The Duke Brothers – Coming to America while walking around New York, Eddie Murphy's Prince Akeem gives some money to a pair of men by the side of the road. What did you give him? Oh, I just gave him some pocket change. Fans of the previous John Landis comedy Trading Places will recognize the two recipients. Reprising their roles as the Duke brothers, Ralph Bellamy and Don Amici play the now-broke siblings. They're clearly in dire straits after the events of their previous outing, making this a glorious bit of irony. Murphy's wealthy hero ends up giving them just the money they need to get a leg up again. It's unclear what the future holds for this duo, but it's oddly charming to see them again under such circumstances. Mortimer, we're back. Number 18. Chubbs, Little Nicky Many audiences remember Chubbs as the former professional golfer that mentors the title character in Happy Gilmore. I'm the club pro here, Chubbs Peterson. And I'm offering to teach you how to play golf personally, for free. No. After his untimely demise, he goes to the afterlife, where the hero of Little Nicky later encounters him. Sandler's films are no stranger to cameos, and it's especially fun to see Carl Weathers again in the enjoyable part. His affable personality makes him a welcome presence in any movie, let alone one where he gets to hang out in heaven and be a dance instructor. Weathers slides back into the role like a glove, and provides one of the better walk-ons in the comedy. You mumble! I don't think so. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. Bye, Chad. All in the hips. Yeah! Number 17. J. Jonah Jameson, Spider-Man Far From Home J. Jonah Jameson is known as the editor-in-chief at the Daily Bugle. Who is Spider-Man? He's a criminal, that's who he is. A vigilante, a public menace. What's he doing on my front page? Mr. Jameson, your wife is on line one. She needs to know if you... He played a major part in the Tobey Maguire films, but he was absent in the MCU until Spider-Man Far From Home. The movie ends with Peter Parker having defeated Mysterio and trying to return to normal life. When a news report surfaces in Times Square revealing Spider-Man's identity, it's none other than Jameson who makes an appearance as the anchor of his show. J.K. Simmons returns in Tom Holland's timeline with that signature brash attitude we all love to hate, stepping back so effortlessly into the role and setting up additional work in the sequel No Way Home. There you have it, folks, conclusive proof that Spider-Man was responsible for the brutal murder of Mysterio. Number 16. Dom, the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift Over the course of several films, Dominic Toretto has become the pivotal character in the Fast franchise. Brian Earl Spillman. Sounds like a serial killer name. Is that what you are? No, man. Don't come around here again. He didn't appear in the main plot of the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, but the filmmaker snuck him in at the very end. Lucas Black's hero, Sean, prepares for a final race without the audience seeing his opponent until the last minute. Vin Diesel shows up in a cameo that arguably re-energized the entire series, preparing people for a plethora of sequels and the potential for his character to return. Look at that smirk. You ready, kid? Number 15. Matt Hooper, Piranha 3D to open this dark comedy about murderous fish, the filmmakers choose to reference the most famous aquatic horror movie of all time. 
Actor Richard Dreyfuss appears in a rowboat as part of a fun nod to his role in Jaws. That's it. Goodbye. I'm not going to waste my time arguing with a man who's lining up to be a hot lunch. I'm going to see you later. Instead of playing oceanographer Matt Hooper, though, the performer is in the role of a seemingly ordinary fisherman also named Matt. Things quickly take an exciting turn as the water swirls around after an earthquake. Rather than getting out of the situation, Matt finds himself overboard and at the mercy of the piranhas. It's an outrageous beginning to a wild movie that trades shark attacks for swarms of exotic fish. Number 14. Joker, the Batman At the end of this Batman story, the Riddler finds himself in Arkham Asylum after the caped crusader thwarts his plans. Isn't that just terrible? Him raining on your brain like that? The antagonist's neighbor in the next cell ends up being, you guessed it, the Joker himself. Barry Keoghan plays the criminal clown in a small cameo that hints at a future appearance in the new timeline. Keoghan brings out his creepiest possible delivery for this brief moment, leaving an impression without overstaying his welcome. The infamous character created buzz that only gave more press to an already successful movie. And whether or not he appears in the next film, he definitely makes a terrific statement in The Batman. <laughs> Number 13, Jay and Silent Bob, Scream 3. Throughout Kevin Smith's View Ask Universe, Jay and Silent Bob function as recurring characters with lots of jokes and running commentary. They make a rare guest appearance in a non Smith film with Scream 3. The duo is on a tour and runs into Courtney Cox's character before Jay has a few choice words for her. Hey, Connie, how's Maury? She retaliates by flipping them off. Considering that the Scream series is part comedy, this isn't the most insane thing to happen in the franchise, but it's still pretty awesome. Fans of them will not be disappointed with their brief screen time either, considering that it's lighthearted and profane like all of their scenes in the Clerks movies. How many times have I told you not to be dealing in front of the store? I'm not dealing, man. What are you talking about? Yo, you got anything, man? Yeah, man, what you want, man? Number 12, E.T., Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. You might not have seen this cameo the first time you saw The Phantom Menace. If you don't mind watching the first episode again, keep an eye out during the Galactic Senate scene for other extraterrestrials. George Lucas decided to include the alien species as a salute to his friend Steven Spielberg's classic. Order! Lucas is clearly paying it forward, considering that Spielberg features a Star Wars reference during the Halloween sequence in E.T. It's an exchange of Easter eggs we can't help but find endearing. Keep the pause button ready and wow your friends with some exclusive knowledge about the prequels. Now they will elect a new chancellor, a strong chancellor, one who will not let our tragedy continue. Number 11, Wolverine, X-Men First Class. This prequel to the X-Men series is full of mutants from the comics, but one notable hero is absent from the plot. Magneto and Professor X travel the world to find other gifted people for their team. Eventually, they set their sights on the Claude character. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra, Charles Xavier. The appearance comes out of the blue and it's over within seconds. Hugh Jackman doesn't even look back to spot his visitors, instead telling them to go away in a blunt line of dialogue. It's a hilarious moment that gives fans a glimpse of Wolverine without seeing him as a main player. It's even more inventive than the priceless cameo of the X-Men squad in Deadpool 2. How about that pots with the giant pigeon wings? What do those do anyway, huh? Carry them three feet off the ground to snatch up the nearest muffin crumb? Number 10, Ray Stance, Casper. The titular spirit might be a friendly ghost, and this was billed as a family movie. But after seeing founding Ghostbuster Ray Stance come running out of Whipstaff Manor in a panic, well, we were forced to reconsider and quickly prep ourselves for some serious scares. Thankfully, whatever Casper's ghostly trio of uncles did to Ray off screen, they didn't recreate on camera for us viewers. As for Mr. Stance, however, we hadn't seen him since 1989. So imagine the pleasant reaction of cinema goers when the pop culture icon suddenly appeared on screen, fully decked out in Ghostbusters gear and providing a playful riff on the classic saying no less. Who are you gonna call? <laughs> someone else. Fans of SNL might also double take during the exorcism scene in Casper. 
Yup, that is everyone's favorite chain-smoking gossip columnist, Guido Sarducci. Number 9. Ray Nicolette, Out of Sight. Yeah, this is Ray Nicolette. Hey, hi, hi. Directed by Steven Soderbergh and starring George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, and numerous recognizable co-stars, Out of Sight was a major critical success. In addition to being a tightly written crime comedy boasting stellar performances all around and truly honoring author Elmore Leonard, Out of Sight also featured a little gift in the form of a cameo by Michael Keaton, who gave us a second taste of Ray Nicolette, a character he'd played the year before in Jackie Brown, itself based on Leonard's novel Rum Punch. You ever seen him so good? No. How do you know he's so good? He told me. By having Ray pop up in Out of Sight, Soderbergh and Tarantino created a little Elmore Leonard universe that extended across film studios. Next thing you know, boom, you know, on the couch. And that's how you score now, huh? Number 8. Kane, Spaceballs. We were lost. None of us knew where we were. <laughs> okay, so obviously John Hurt's executive officer Kane couldn't actually have survived to appear in Spaceballs because, well, he met a gruesome and iconic fate in Alien. But in the wonderful world of filmmaker Mel Brooks, such trivial details do not matter. Hurt was credited as himself, but he's clearly revisiting his <clears throat> breakout sci-fi role. Is he all right? <laughs> Given his status in sci-fi culture, it was to the delight of fans of the genre when he was spotted at Gus's Galaxy Grill, when he unfortunately experienced deja vu after eating the special of the day. Oh no, not again. <sighs> Number seven, Red Skull. Avengers Infinity War. Welcome, Thanos. Sure, we weren't expecting a visit to the planet Vormir, but we really weren't expecting to see Red Skull after seven years of being MIA in the MCU. Characters in this universe have a tendency to pop up where you least expect them, but even so, Red Skull's return was a surprise cameo, the likes of which we'd rarely seen up until this point. We are all wrong. Though Hugo Weaving did not return to play the role, the Walking Dead's Ross Markwind made it so that it was all but impossible to tell the difference. After so many years in the dark, we finally learned Red Skull's fate. Saul holds a special place among the Infinity Stones. You might say it is a certain wisdom. Number 6. Doc Brown – A Million Ways to Die in the West This live-action Seth MacFarlane film largely missed the bullseye with, well, everyone, but what it lacked in overall quality, it certainly made up for with cameos. Seeing Jamie Foxx's beloved Django once again strike out against racism and slavery with a vengeance was a pleasant surprise, but Doc Brown really stole the show. Ten thousand and gold bullion. We'll kindly relieve the Wells Fargo company of this heavy little bird. Playing with the fact that his final film implied that Doc seemingly settled in 1885 to raise a family. Taking little temporal vacations here and there, McFarlane brought actor Christopher Lloyd on board for this hilarious little moment that surely had Back to the Future fans squealing with delight. Number 5. Darth Maul – Solo – A Star Wars Story Disney's second standalone Star Wars film unfortunately failed to recreate the success of its predecessor Rogue One, but the space western delivered plenty of fun and fan service, the appearance of Darth Maul being a particularly shocking moment. The Clone Wars TV show is considered canon, but many of its story elements, such as the return of Darth Maul, felt firmly entrenched in the animated series. Though the character was a fan favorite from his debut in The Phantom Menace, few of us dared to dream of him returning to films until we saw it with our own eyes. Now that is how you do a surprise cameo. Kira, you and I will be working much more closely from now on. Number 4. Tom Hansen, 21 Jump Street Tom Hansen, DEA, on your knees. Hollywood has made us sit through a lot of unnecessary reboots that no one asked for. Thankfully, 21 Jump Street and its sequel proved to be exceptions. While many cinema-goers were unfamiliar with the original property, seeing the film because of its promising young cast rather than out of nostalgia for the late 80s series, Johnny Depp's sudden appearance was still a welcome one. A little dweeb just ruined a five-year investigation. For fans of the original TV show, however, seeing original lead Tom Hansen was the perfect knowing wink to say thanks for coming, even if he and Doug Penhall quickly meet a grisly end. Jump Street Division. Yeah. Come on, you guys are Jump Street? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny because we were actually Jump Street. Number 3. The T-1000 – Wayne's World and Last Action Hero 
Honestly, considering how iconic his role as the T-1000 from Terminator 2 Judgment Day is, we suspect that Robert Patrick could have made a comfortable living just doing T-1000 cameos. But to date, we've only spotted two of them. First in Wayne's world, he pulls over our rock and roll loving star Wayne Campbell. They could have kept it subtle by making it a routine traffic stop, but they instead go all in by having Patrick pull out a photo of John Connor. Have you seen this boy? Then in Last Action Hero, which stars Arnold Schwarzenegger no less, the T-1000 walks by in a blink and you'll miss it cameo. Number two, Captain Willard, Hot Shots Part Deux. Somebody once wrote, hell is the impossibility of reason. When you consider the respective careers of Martin and Charlie Sheen, it feels safe to say that the apple fell pretty far from the tree. But from the 80s on, Charlie, like his dad, was a bona fide A-lister, working in both dramatic and comedic roles, such as the Rambo spoof Hot Shots Part Deux. I love you in Wall Street! It's during this film that Sheen's internal narration is interrupted by that of another, who just so happens to be his father's iconic wartime character, Benjamin L. Willard from Apocalypse Now. It is hilariously meta, especially when they compliment each other on Wall Street. Dad, how many times I gotta tell you, I am not a salesman, I'm an account executive. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, David Dunn, Split. M. Night Shyamalan is best known for his twist ending in The Sixth Sense, which forces you to reconsider everything you just watched. In Split, he once again threw us a major curveball, but this time, it's more of a big picture zoom out. Having just witnessed the birth of a monster, we see the story through the lens of a newscast being watched by none other than Bruce Willis's David Dunn from Shyamalan's Unbreakable. And he gave him a funny name, too. What was it? Less. The cameo adds a whole new layer of fun to an already excellent movie, along with the promise of an epic crossover sequel. But this wasn't even the first time Willis gave us a classic character cameo. What the hell are you doing? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.